That's not an asteroid. Some of those little ones here. I don't feel like this is a safe place to be. Okay, I was not expecting to find that. Shit. There's gonna be more coming. I mean, something like that happens, and I mean, there's gonna be other ones coming on there. In the way. Oh, Jesus. I can hear it, I can't see it. Let's see it's over there. embarrassed to admit that I made a pretty basic mistake when it comes to being out in a wilderness environment and that was not really paying attention. Uh, I was so fixated on what was happening up there in the sky that I kind of forgot to think about what was happening down here on the ground and as a result I don't want to say that I'm lost but this area that I'm in right now I don't know where the hell this area is. Uh, some people might call that lost, but there are techniques that you can use if you're in a wilderness environment to help get you from a place that you don't know where the hell it is to a place that you do know where the hell it is. Uh, and that is having a general sense of you know, what is around you in that area. Uh, in the area that I know that I've been kind of tramping around in here, I know that there are mountains off to the east. I know that there is a river that uh, goes from uh, the east to the west uh, that is south of here. So if I just keep walking south, I, I would hit that river. And I know that if I just kept going to the west, I would hit uh, a road. There's a road that runs north-south. So if I just kept going west, I would eventually hit that road. I also know that my camp is, I think it is probably west of where I am right now. But I'm not gonna, I'm not heading west. What I'm doing right now is I'm heading south, which might seem a little counterintuitive because if I know that my camp is off in that direction, why am I heading in this direction? Uh, the reason is because I wanna make sure that I actually get back to my camp. If I just start heading west and I don't really know where I am, I don't know if I'm gonna maybe go too far north of where my camp is, if I'm, maybe I'm, I'm far to the south and I would go too far south of where my camp is and maybe I'll hit that road eventually, but once I get to the road, I, I wouldn't know which way to turn. I won't know if I'm north of my camp on the road or if I'm south of the camp on my road. So what I'm doing is I'm using some techniques uh, to move through the wilderness to kind of lock in on where I uh, am headed. Uh, and uh, the technique that I'm using right now is called looking for a baseline. And the baseline that I'm using is that river that I mentioned. Now I know that if I walk to the river, and then take a right and start heading west, when I get to the road, I know that I'm gonna be south of my camp. So what I will be doing is instead of looking directly for my camp, I'm gonna look for the river, take a right, and then uh, from there, I will be heading west. And once I get to the road, I will know which direction to turn once I get to that road. If I just went directly to the road, you know, I'd get, to, I'd get there and I, I really wouldn't know. I mean, I, I could turn north and, you know, thinking that, you know, my camp is a little north of there and I could just walk and walk and walk and never hit it. I could, you know, do the same thing, go south, make a mistake that way. So I'm using these techniques. Uh, like I said, it's called a baseline. When you're uh, searching for something that you, you, you know that you can't miss, you know that you're gonna hit it. And once I get to that baseline, which is the river, uh, which eventually I'm gonna hit if I keep going south, once I get to that baseline, I'm gonna use that baseline as what's called a handrail. And that means that if I, as long as I keep the river to my left and I just keep heading west, I know that I'm going to eventually get to that intersection between the river and the road. So it's not necessarily the fastest way to get where I wanna get going, but it is a pretty effective way of making sure that I don't totally scroll. Oh, check this out. You see it? Yeah. 
I had no idea this was here. It looks like, I don't know, I, I don't see a lot of foot traffic. I don't, I think this is just some old like, you know, based on the fact that it's just out in the woods, maybe it's like, like a, like a, a maple sugaring shack or something like that. I see a padlock on the, on the door. There. When oh, something over the door. What is that? You know what? This place looks a hell of a lot better than my little shanty log and stick shelter. I don't think people use this. I mean, I'm looking at the ground. Around it, there was a uh, broken glass all over the ground. I think if people were using this, this would be more cleaned up. What is that? That looks new. of paper and there's a uh, there's a little SD card in there it's like a little computer chip card and it's got a date on it it says April April 7th what the hell is it oh shit <laughs> ah, ah, oh ah, fuck ah, ah, okay It's, uh, ow. Uh, 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 that's a screw, a rusty screw. It went through, I felt that. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, I got, um, well, that's why we bring the med kit. Uh, uh, what is this? It says April, April 7th. Uh, I wonder if it's got video on it. Uh, well, while I pump this full of Neosporin, I guess there's just one way to find out. I'm gonna need this camera. So what we're doing is we're communicating by a SIM card and people are traveling, mostly they're traveling, to be honest, south because it's warmer. But people are coming up as, to see what we're up to as well. And I had a bunch of these in metal containers along with radios and other stuff and solar flashlights. So we're actually recording stuff on camera like this and we're sending it off. And I'd encourage you to do this. I've had a couple of these I found uh, from a guy down south called Praxis. Uh, he seems to be struggling a bit, but at least he's trying. And this is what we need to do. We're not winning, guys and girls. We're losing. We've lost our planet. We're not in charge of this planet, as I'm sure you know. But it's worse than that. If this keeps going, there's going to be no education, no health care, no growth, no future. We're just going to scurry around living like rats in holes. And then what are we going to do? Wait for these dudes or dudettes to leave. We don't even know what they look like. We don't even know if they're robotics, aliens, one alien, a bunch of species. We don't even know why they're here. We have to find out why they're here. Until we find that out, it's hopeless. We have to get together. We have to figure it out. What I do know is trying to fight them right now with the technology that we have is a death sentence. So I'm still hiding, but I'm trying to find out stuff. There's been a lot of activity in this area right since the beginning. There's definitely something going on about 50 to 70 kilometers north of me, near Algonquin Park. I'm going to head up there and I'm going to try and know what's going on. There's been a few people in the area. Uh, we bump into each other and we talk regular. We've tried to go up there and find out and none of them have come back. So I'm going to have to be very, very cautious, but I, we've got to start fighting. If we don't fight, we've lost the earth for good. So I've just come back from Bit of break and entry, found some good stuff, we'll show you that in a minute. But there's a lot of the flitters flying around this morning and I'm not really that comfortable. 
don't want to get zapped. So about an hour from home, so there's a conduit pipe that I actually will bunk in. So what I do is I get five or six of these bags from full of leaves and sleep on two or three of these and have a couple of them on the sides and on my head and it's pretty toasty. And I do reuse these. At the moment supplies are pretty good. These are always useful. I find whether it's just me that the flit is if I'm lying flat on the ground with one of these over me, shiny side down. They don't see me. The important thing is your head and your body. Whether they're picking up heat or not, we don't know. What we find up in Canada is the uh, radios. If you use any sort of radio or any sort of uh, active device, like for night vision or anything active, they are targeting it and zoning and killing any movement in the area. If you are going to use stuff like be careful. I always carry plenty of extra bags with me because you never know what you're going to find. This is stuff I also always carry with me. You might be fascinated by this. This is actually an old compass. Got a bit of magnifying glass on it, uh, almost points to true north, and it has a mirror on that side for signaling. But I use it to see how rough I'm looking. Useful things, these old things. This is quite reliable. I haven't had any problems with it. The modern ones, I find, they don't take too much abuse. Speaking of which, I also use these. Small, compact, and they do the job. What I really like about these is the fact that they are made out of metal and ceramics. Nice little thing. Like I say, I always carry a lot of these. So we have made a decent insulation, preferably with two garbage bags full of leaf debris that I'm lying on completely, not just my trunk, but a hole in me. And then use a sleeping bag. And if it's really cold, I'll put one of the garbage bags with leaves on top of me as well. It does work. This is more your summer camper, but it works for this. You can be cold for a night. So, I don't know even what the date is anymore. Everything got very confused up here after the arrival and then the event. What I do know is that Kitty and Wolfie and her parents and the cats headed off to the Shire and there wasn't enough room in the car for me so Kitty was going to come back and she never came back. I gave it about a week and I headed on my bike out to find her. So just outside of Peterborough I found the car. They'd been killed along with a lot of people that day um, and that week they were in a car, they were using technology the flood has found them and killed them. I buried them as best as I could. I consider continuing onwards to the Shire, uh, which is where my most of my bug out stuff is and where I expected to go. But I just couldn't. I turned around and went back home. So I'm still in the new market area and I've been here ever since. Pretty rough early on. Uh, I drank a lot and it was pretty tough. But I had a ton of food in the house and I'd stored up a lot of water so I was okay, even when the power stayed off. I was fine even through the winter with the fireplace and the other stuff I have. So after the first disasters and the terrible things and all the rest of it, what was left of the police and the army in Canada actually got the people that were surviving together and encouraged them to bike and cycle westwards. So as far as I know, most of the surviving population in Toronto actually tried to head towards BC. I wish them well. There's no way I was going to do that anyway <laughs> because of the winter. And the winter came in really quick. It came in very, very fast. It was brutal. To try and get to BC on foot from Toronto, uh, good luck. I know a lot of people try to go south. Uh, a lot of people went to the cottages. A few of them survived because they had supplies and their people were in contact with. There's a bunch of preppers up on 48 that I've been in contact with. A couple of people in the area. So what I do is at night I go around and I use my trusty crowbar and I'm careful. I break into abandoned houses and you'd be shocked what you find. And what I'm doing is I'm storing most of this stuff up, not because I need it, but to try and get a nucleus of supply together for a resistance group. We have to fight these people. They killed Kitty. They killed a lot of people. So, coriander, oregano, not a lot of it. But something's better than nothing. Some tea. 
chocolate. That was always Kitty's favourite. Cough mixture. Bit of coconut left over. A few cold tablets. Some seeds. Can't plant yet, but I'm going to. Sewing kit. This is what I got out of two houses. I mean, people have ransacked the stuff and everybody ran out of food, but you'd be shocked what's actually hidden away. Tin of beans, expired 2019, perfectly good. This is brilliant. That's a score. Yeah, so that's what I'm doing. I'm going to head to the pipe now and make the bed, sit in. A bit worried, there's been a lot of flitter activity, and we'll see what we see. That's it from me, Hoople's Cat in Canada. Five, four, six months after the arrival. If you can, use SIM cards, make video messages, say what you know to be true in your area about what's going on. We need data points. We need to know what these things are and why they're here. We have to beat them, we have to fight them. I do think it's going to be the extinction of civilized humanity, if not the species. Toodles. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.